Well, hello, people of Playground. Today, I want to talk to you guys about your settings, prompt guidance, quality and details, and samplers. I feel like some of you guys are kind of missing the point of those settings. So I want to give you a few tips to get the most optimal results. Let's get started. Now, first off, we recently added some new samplers for pro users. So if you go to your sampler menu here, you'll notice now that we have seven new samplers. There's one missing that will be active very soon. But in the meantime, these six will be available for pro users. Not to say the old samplers are obsolete, they're still very useful, but there are some benefits to the newer samplers. For example, I've got the older samplers here listed at the top and the newer ones listed below. For this demo, I use the same seed with a prompt guidance of four and quality in details of 10. This is more of an exaggerated scenario, but visually it was the best way to show you the differences. You'll notice with DDIM, PLMS, and Euler, they're very soft and it looks almost incomplete. PLMS looks sharper, a bit more developed, but again, it doesn't look like the best image with these particular settings. Now, if we look at Hyun, DPM2, and LMS, they're not as soft. And although the image is fairly decent, it still kind of looks incomplete, right? And then we have Euler Ancestral, and DPM2 Ancestral. Again, very soft. DPM2 Ancestral doesn't look good. <laughs> With the new samplers, DPM++ 2M, 2M Keras, DPM++ SDE, SDE Keras. This is the one that's not active at the moment, but it will be very soon. If I zoom in a little closer here, you see that the image isn't as soft as the previous ones we saw but kind of close to Hyun and DPM2. And with the SDE variants, you see this one looks fairly sharp and this one looks a bit softer. Then we have the DPM++ 2M SDE. <laughs> These are a mouthful. And SDE Keras, same situation, not as soft. They seem a little bit more developed. So generally speaking, the new samplers can process the image with lower quality and details and lower prompt guidance. Now, it doesn't really mean that's the best way to approach this. Like typically you're going to use more quality and details, at least 30 and up, maybe 25 for Stable Diffusion 1.5. But I kind of wanted to show you this exaggerated setting so that you can see visually what's going on here. I want to show you some quick examples with Stable Diffusion 1.5. Here are the older samplers at the top and the newer ones at the bottom with a prompt guidance of four and quality and details at 10. And the same samplers with prompt guidance of eight and quality and details of 20. You see the newer samplers look a bit more developed. Now to kind of make sense of what's going on here, I want to talk to you about something that's termed convergence. Convergence is basically when the image really doesn't change a whole lot, regardless of more quality and details, which is also known as steps. In this example, I have quality and details or steps between three to 30 with an increment of three and prompt guidance, which is also known as CFG between two to 20. If we look at steps three to 15, prompt guidance two to six, and by the way, this is Stable Diffusion 1.5, no filters. You'll start to see that there really isn't any great images here. And the faces, although it's under hood, doesn't really show up. Even if we move up the chart up to steps 15 to 30, we get some sort of an image, but it just doesn't feel complete, right? And you can barely make out a face. But the one thing that you'll notice is that they really don't change a whole lot from 15 to 30. Now, when we increase the prompt guidance 6, 8 to 10, even with quality in details of 15 at the most, we now start to see some faces show up. But you see they happen at different points. And then as we move further down the line here, the face starts to become more prominent. But again, the images don't change a whole lot throughout the whole generation process. That is known as convergence. What is the point where the image no longer changes? And I mean in a way where it's not a dramatic change. Smaller details may, but the overall image doesn't change a whole lot. That is known as convergence. 
Now, if I zoom out quite a bit, you see that when we increase the prompt guidance, even the image starts to change in color and style, but it doesn't necessarily mean that if you add more quality and details that the image is going to get better. Now, not all samplers are made equal. This is Hyun. Previously, we looked at Euler. Even though it's the same image, the same seed, we can't even get the face to show up with a prompt guidance of six and adding more steps doesn't help. But if we have a prompt guidance of eight, we actually see the face start to show up with only quality and details of nine. With the new sampler DPM++ SDE, which is probably one of my personal favorites, albeit a bit slower than the other ones, almost double the time, even with prompt guidance of four to six, and as low as six to nine quality in details, we get a pretty decent image compared to what we previously saw. Now I could go a whole lot deeper into samplers and that can be a 20 minute video. Let me know in the comments below if you wanna geek out on that. But now that you know the term of convergence and you see how prompt guidance and quality and details can affect the development of your image generation, there's a couple takeaways that I want you to consider. I don't know if you noticed as I was showing this, if you'll notice PLMS here looks under processed or underdeveloped. And of course, with a prompt guidance of four and 10, we know that this particular sampler most likely needs more quality in details or an adjustment to the prompt guidance. So what I'm gonna do is reuse the same seed and we're going to process this with different settings. I'm gonna select the same sampler and instead of four, we're just gonna bump this up to six maybe and increase the quality in details to 25. I did use deliberate as the filter and we're going to generate. Here's the same image side by side and we see now it looks a whole lot better. Now, if you ever come across where it looks like it's artifacting, you just have to play around with either setting. Typically quality and details, you don't have to go past 30 knowing what you know about convergence. So the other factor could be the prompt guidance. It's either too low, maybe even too high. Similar situation here with the newer sampler DPM++2 MSDE. We actually had a prompt guidance of eight quality in details at 20. So let's do the same thing. We're gonna copy the seed. Let's put on the Rev animated filter. Eight might have been a bit too much, but we'll leave it for now. And we're gonna bump this up to 30. Let's make sure we select the right sampler and generate this image. And here's the processed image. Most of the filters that you see on Playground, the developers usually give a suggested sampler to use. Euler Ancestral is a pretty popular one, but the majority of them these days recommend the newer samplers. But depending how it's trained, those samplers are best to use to get the best outcome. There's a couple of videos on filter breakdowns. In both those videos, I mentioned that there's a guide here that I posted for the best prompt guidance and quality in details. Now, mind you, these are suggested, but there's also a section here for samplers, which samplers work best. We have our filters here on the side and some standard settings that you can start with. And you'll notice a lot of them have the DPM++ variant. Let's take a look at a few practical applications. Just remember, these are just suggestions. You're free to experiment as you please. But if you use the spreadsheet as a guide, let's say we wanna use Rev Animated, for example. Let's select Rev Animated. The suggested sampler is DPM++ 2M Keras. Prompt guidance is a pretty wide range, three to 10. I like to start between five to seven. And for quality in details, you can go between 25 to 30 usually. Let's go to 25 and we'll generate four images. As we look at the images here, they turned out pretty well. Although I want something a bit more contrasty. One of the other tips I can give you is that if you increase your prompt guidance, you tend to get more contrast in your image, deeper blacks, that type of thing. We could also increase the quality in details to get different results. With that being said, I'm gonna change this to eight quality in details to 30, and we'll go ahead and generate another four images. Notice now that we have more prominent colors, the shadows, the blacks, they're a bit more intense. Yeah, I would be totally happy with this set of images. 
Now let's try an SDXL model. I'm going to change the height to 1024 and the width to 768. Let's use MBBXL. This is one of my favorites. Well, I like a lot of the SDXL filters. We'll leave the prompt guidance at 8. And typically for SDXL, I tend to stay between 40 to 50. On occasion, I may go to 60 to 75. It really depends on the type of image you want. As always, it will take a little bit of experimentation. Definitely a different result with MBBXL compared to Rev Animated. Different details in colors. Of course, it's SDXL, so we can do a higher resolution. And personally, I much prefer the MBBXL images in terms of the detail and style. In the meantime, if you happen to be new to Playground AI, make sure to check out any one of these videos on how to bring your own art to life. Until then, my friends, this is Playground.